But there isn't any question what's been the best football game of this season so far. It happened Saturday night in the second half in Woo. Tuscaloosa. What a performance. Ah. That's Ryan Williams. Do you guys know that Ryan Williams will turn 18 in February? Yeah, that's he was unbelievable. But the conversation this morning is about Jalen Milrow, who threw for 374 yards, ran for 117, mm. accounted for four touchdowns against a Georgia defense that hadn't allowed a touchdown all year. And so here's the man who invented the draft, Mel Kuyper. So listen, Mel, you we, we do the first draft podcast, you and, and uh, Field Yates and myself every well, Thursday that it drops. And we talked last week about what a really good performance for Milrow in this game might do for his stock. Well, I don't know that he could have possibly played better. So where is Jalen Milrow going right now as far as looking ahead to next April? Vying for QB1 in this draft is what he's doing. Grinny, think about where Shador Sanders is from Colorado off a really good game, really good performance. Think about Cam Ward from Miami of Florida, Carson Beck. You think about a guy like Quinn Ewers coming back from that injury at Texas. So there's five vying for QB1. Jalen Milrow, you argue right now, is QB1. I still have Shador Sanders there. I'm going to debate that in my own mind between now and, and Friday when I come out with those next rankings, Thursday or Friday, depending upon when I'm finished at all. But Jalen Milrow, 53 touchdowns, seven interceptions. That's 53 combined. Combined passing, rushing over the last two years, 18-1 this year, 16-2 and two as a starter. And you see the progression. He's always been a great deep ball thrower, great deep ball accuracy. The progression's been short, intermediate, precise passing, accurate passing there. Operations, right? The details, the pre-snap, he's getting better at that. Jalen Milrow to me right now is in the mix to be certainly QB1 and be a top 10 pick overall, and maybe even higher than that, Greeny, by the time we get to late April. Yeah, look, I mean, we all understand quarterbacks get vaulted up the board, um, and so that's quite the remarkable thing. This is a guy who last year I don't think people even anticipated being in the first round. Now we're talking about him possibly being in the top five. Who's a comp? Like, people will look at him play, and they'll see some of the things that he does. If, if everything works out perfectly, if he winds up being exactly what you hope he could turn into, who does he turn into in the NFL? Yeah, he's granted at 6'2", 225, and he, he runs as fast as he needs to, and he's faster than everybody, right? And he makes the position that is the most difficult to play in sports look easy at times, not hard. And that's what the great ones do, right? It's, everything slows down. looks like they're just toying with you. And this is college, not the NFL, but this is the best college football has to offer. And he made it look at times too easy. So for Jalen Milrow, you see Lamar Jackson out there doing the exact same thing. I watch him here with the Baltimore Ravens at times, just toying with defenders. What Jalen does, he protects that body. He gets out of bounds. When he's in the pocket, he's not just running. He doesn't have – remember Jaden Daniels, the improvement from the first year at LSU to this past year was – Head down, not seeing the field, looking to just take off. He improved that dramatically that final year when he wins the Heisman, right? Jalen Milrow slips and slides in the pocket. When he needs a run, he does. So right now, he just gets it, and I think the game slowed down. The progression from last year to this year has been consistent. It's been steady. That's why right now I'll be debating between now and Thursday, Friday, whether Jalen Milrow is my QB1 or at worst, Greeny, at worst, QB2. Now, vaulting ahead of, among others, the quarterback that he beat in that game, Carson Beck, who entered this season, I think, as the presumptive number one pick. I will make Mel answer this question on the First Draft podcast, which, will, <laughs> which you will hear on Thursday at noon, anywhere you get your podcast, so you don't necessarily have to wait till Friday. I'm going to make him do it. But, 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 Jeff, as I noticed, you were wearing an Alabama tie. Roll Tide. This morning. <laughs> um, you met Jalen Milrow on Friday. Friday. You had the same exact impression everyone does when they meet him. Brick house. I mean, dude walked in to shake my hand. My son Josh and my wife Karen were standing there, and he walks up. And as he's walking up, I'm thinking he's a linebacker. And then I see his chain. He starts talking. I was like, oh, my God, this is a quarterback. And he's a freaking grown man. Like, he is. And, and so calm. I asked him. I was like, you ready for tomorrow? It's, it was like he went, they weren't even playing a big game. He just, he's got this energy. And as I met different players walking through, they all had that same confidence. And you can tell it comes from him. And I will say this. Watching that game, I was at the game. I do liken him to Lamar Jackson. Because, now, he's a bigger body, but people question the accuracy and different things. When you see him slip these tackles, it, SEC is pro football when it comes to defense, right? There's not a better defensive. Mm -hmm. He faces them week in week. He's played a ton of football. To, to make Kirby smart defense and go hang up those points, that's tough to do. And he makes it, like Mel said, makes it look easy. I was super impressed with the kid. And the difference between him and Lamar Jackson is mostly the time which is to say, at the time that Lamar Jackson right. was being drafted, people said, well, I don't know if you can do that in the NFL and win. Now, 
perhaps in large part because of Lamar Jackson, Jalen Milrow is exactly what every NFL team is looking for. Can I advocate for Mel to put him at two? Because I don't want there to be no more naysayers for him to let know. Like that, <laughs> if he puts him at one, then there are no more naysayers. So keep him at two, yes. QB two, keep him so, hungry. so he can keep motivated and he can keep selling them like shirts. <laughs> I was struck by how needs it. Nick, he doesn't yeah. need it. This kid is on a scale <laughs> yeah. of one to ten. The people, everybody that knows the kid on a scale of one to ten, character-wise, he's a fifty. Okay, I mean he's off right. the charts from a character standpoint. Everybody loves Jalen Milrow and the talent that he has, and the fact that he's going to keep working at getting better. And he knows the areas you need to keep working on the NFL. It's a short underneath game. The deep throws in college, mm-hmm. you can't do in the NFL. And I'm not going to get into why. That was the story for last week. But the bottom line <laughs> is, you have to be the checkdown. You have to be accurate and precise, not just act precise oh, in those yeah. areas, and he'll keep working on that aspect of his performance, but certainly Jalen Milrow, I say he checks just about every box. What is it that you didn't love? You say, why is he, was he five? I had to wait till the Georgia game, guys. I'm not elevating prior to a game of that magnitude, so you respond after that performance, and I always say, if your talent of your team is equal or right around that what the other one is, it's a big evaluation game, and in this case, they were both even on paper, and he got the advantage after they fell behind, and he had to respond he did. It was a great talk about the Mets and the Braves. This was a heck of a football game between yes, Alabama and Georgia. I was really struck by how Nick Saban talked about Milrow on college game day. Like, and this is a guy that you go back a calendar year. I'm not sure Nick did feel that confident in him, yeah. right? Well, that, he benched that, him and, early right. last season. Yeah. So, yeah. But he was talking about him as like the guy that would make the difference against yeah. Georgia and obviously it turned out to be right. Yeah, I, I we never know. We, this time last year, Jaden Daniels wasn't the two pick, right? Like, right. That, that, there's a lot of college football to be played before the draft. Parenthetically, Mel, uh, we, there has been a movement for us to change the name of the podcast from the first draft podcast to the two deep safety podcast. <laughs> yes. Uh, how, how do you feel about it, Mel? Are you in favor or opposed? I'm all for it, Greeny. <laughs> <laughs>